Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Transport Canada has announced that new levels of drone pilot certifications will soon be released and the fee structure for new and existing services is being revised. Spoiler alert, the fees aren't going down. On May 19th, 2021, Transport Canada published this document called Transport Canada's Fees for Remotely Piloted Aircraft Systems, RPAS, Beyond Visual Line of Sight, BVLOS. But don't be fooled. Yes, it does include the fee structure for the new BVLOS certifications, but it also proposes increased fees for basic drone registration and hefty new fees for SFOCs, Special Flight Authorization Certificates, which used to be free. They're looking for feedback on the proposal by June 20th, 2021, with the fees kicking in at some point after the fall of 2021. For the life of me, I do not understand why they provide a schedule in terms of seasons. Just use real dates like the rest of us, please. Now, I'll be honest with you. The fee proposal document is 17 pages of extremely complicated text and dense tables. I've put a link in the description below this video. And to understand the BVLOS stuff in it, you need to go back to another complicated document published in April of 2020. I did do two videos about that little gem, and there's another link down below. So I spent over four hours grinding through this stuff, intending to offer you one of my classic simple tables, summarizing it all. I'm sorry to say I failed. This is as far as I got. I figured it would take me another four hours to make it presentable. This proposal is crazy complicated. But at least out of this mess, I can explain that there are three main chunks to be aware of. Changes in scope and price for existing registration and certifications, new fees for SFOCs, and new certification levels for BVLOS activities with associated fees. Let's start with the changes that affect the vast majority of us, the recreational drone pilots, and those who do what I call light commercial work. Number one, they are doubling the cost to register a drone from $5 to $10. You might say, big deal, the $10 fee is a one-time fee. But don't forget, drones only last a few years, so you can look forward to paying that fee every time you buy a new drone over 250 grams. But my bigger concern is the fact that the 10 buck fee now applies to drones over 25 kilograms up to 150 kilograms. Clearly, drones over 25 kilograms are mostly drones for various forms of cargo delivery and other heavy commercial operations. To put it in perspective, the average motorcycle weighs about 180 kilograms. Why did these guys get away with the same 10 buck fee that I pay for a Mavic 2? My recommendation is to leave us regular folks alone. Leave the fee for drones under 25 kilograms at $5 and hit the large drone owners with a much higher fee. How about $500? A one-time fee of $500 is still a bargain compared to the annual license plate fees we pay on our cars. How about exam fees? Well, the good news is that they're leaving the exam fees for both the basic pilot exam and advanced pilot exam at $10 per attempt. And the $25 one-time fee to get your advanced pilot certificate isn't increasing either. There's also no change for those seeking flight reviewer status. And there's actually good news for advanced pilots. It appears they're extending our existing advanced licenses to cover two kinds of activities that currently require an SFOC. The first is what they call localized BVLOS operations. This means stuff like flying your drone around the far side of a building or doing a crop inspection beyond the distance you can see your drone or performing one of those follow me activities. All the other regular rules would still apply and you would need to meet two new requirements to do this kind of stuff. 
First, you need to be capable of monitoring the airspace to avoid other aircraft. And second, your drone needs to meet additional safety requirements. Now, these new drone specs are supposed to be spelled out in Appendix A of the original BVLOS pr proposal document. Unfortunately, that appendix doesn't actually state which of the many requirements listed there apply. Okay, this, this is a great expansion of the rules, to be honest, permitting some degree of flight beyond visual line of sight for normal, normal folks like you and me. But you know what? It's really only catching up with reality. I did a quick anonymous poll of both basic and advanced pilots recently, asking folks about flying BVLOS. 70% of the respondents said that they already fly BVLOS in at least 20% of their flights. And 20% said they flew BVLOS for a significant amount of time on 80% of their flights. In other words, lots of people are already doing simple, safe BVLOS flights. And they're doing it because they trust the existing technology and they fly in a safe manner with, with the visibility to the area of the flight and or ensuring there aren't people around. Frankly, I don't think we need new technical specs for our drones for this kind of simple activity. The second area of advanced certificate changes is a bit of a head scratcher. They are now going to allow advanced drone pilots to fly drones up to 150 kilograms as long as they're within visual line of sight in uncontrolled airspace. Now, what's the point of that? 150 kilograms within VLOS and only in Class G airspace? My only thought is this would allow people to train for flying those bigger drones capable of BVLOS flights without requiring an SFOC. That might be it. Or maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Like I said, these expansions to the advanced certificates appear to apply to existing advanced license holders without any additional fees or exams. I would like TC to confirm that. Okay, that's part one changes to existing registration fees and existing certifications. Now the bad news, SFOCs. These are currently free, but will now cost either $150 or $2,000 per application, with an additional $60 fee for minor amendments. First responder applications would be exempt from these fees. They are doing away with the need for an SFOC for lots of things, like drones over 25 kilograms and certain kinds of low-risk BVLOS flights, which I'll talk about next. But you will still need an SFOC if you want to fly at an advertised event or fly over the usual 400-foot ceiling or fly within three nautical miles of a DND facility or if you're a visitor to Canada. Here's what they're doing. They're classifying SFOC applications as either low complexity or high complexity. Low complexity SFOCs will be the ones costing $150 per application. And these include flying at an advertised event, foreign pilot applications, or weird stuff like flying more than five drones from one controller. They don't mention the DND airspace requirement in either the low or high complexity lists that they provide. Transport Canada says their math shows it currently costs them $827 to process low complexity SFOCs like these ones. With a loaded labor rate of say $120 per hour, and that's just my guess, that means it takes a TC inspector nearly a full day to process one of these applications. Really? Doesn't sound very efficient to me. Then there are the high complexity SFOCs. Flying over 400 feet falls in here, as does flying drones over 150 kilograms, flying BVLOS over high population density zones, and flying drones with, with passengers. They want to charge $2,000 per application for these guys, which by the way, apparently costs them 
about $6,200 today, or about a week and a half full time by Don's math. My feedback to Transport Canada on these SFOC fees? Wow. First of all, get the foreign pilot applications out of the F SFOC scope. Just allow foreign pilots to pass their basic or advanced pilot requirements just like everyone else. Simple. A year and a half ago, I heard this was just an IT issue related to authentication and it was going to be solved real soon. Second, I also recommend removing from the SFOC scope both flights over 400 feet and flying near DND aerodromes. Just make these require a NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization request. Simple and logical. Finally, regarding the fees, these remaining low complexity SFOCs, particularly for advertised events, should not be so expensive. I think $50 would not be unreasonable. And if the high complexity SFOCs really cost $6,000 to process, then charge that. Why are we subsidizing high-end commercial applications who undoubtedly have profitable business cases for doing this kind of flight to begin with? Okay, finally, we get to the third major chunk of proposals in this document, and the only piece mentioned in the document's title, BVLOS operations. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, because if you are interested, you're going to have to read the document very carefully. The key takeaway is that they're introducing two new certificates, a low-risk BVLOS pilot certificate and an RPAS operator certificate. The low-risk BVLOS pilot certificate will allow you to fly drones up to 150 kilograms outside of controlled airspace and away from densely populated areas beyond visual line of sight. There will be a mandatory ground school requirement, which I'm sure the ground schools are happy to hear, plus a $50 exam fee, plus a $125 certificate fee. All of this has nothing to do with the localized BVLOS stuff I mentioned earlier, those the stuff like flying around a building. That's entirely different. The second BVLOS related certificate is what they call the RPAS Operator Certificate, which they cleverly abbreviated to ROC. Yeah, exactly the same acronym as the Radio Operator Certificate. I recommended they change this name. Apparently they didn't listen. Now, just an aside, I work in the technology industry and we don't mince words. If I came up with something like this in my work environment, I would be offered the choice of being called stupid or incompetent. Just saying. Anyways, attaining this RPAS operator certificate entails putting together a system of administrative, safety and quality processes that would allow the organization to enter into the realm of heavy duty drones, either in VLOS or BVLOS, for a one-time fee of $250, you get the license to print money in this industry. Now, considering the amount of oversight and attention this part of the drone industry is requiring from TC, I frankly think this is riding on the backs of all of the rest of us. The $250 one-time fee should be replaced with a more commensurate fee of, say, $5,000 every two years. That's my opinion. Okay, that's it. And believe me, I've just skimmed the surface of all the details and justification verbiage in this document. Please take a look at it, or just trust me with this summary and submit your feedback to Transport Canada before June 20th, 2021. To do so, send a clearly identified email to this address, which will also be in the description below the video. Provide them specific feedback on specific items, along with your recommendation. No ranting, just the facts. To summarize my key points of feedback, one, leave the $5 registration fee as is, for drones between 250 grams 
and 25 kilograms. Drones between 25 kilograms and 150 kilograms should have a higher registration fee of $500. Two, please confirm that existing advanced pilots will be grandfathered for the two new activities of localized BVLOS and flying heavier drones in VLOS conditions with no additional exam or fee. Three, remove the new technical requirements for drones flying the new localized BVLOS flight modes. Four, foreign pilots should be permitted to complete basic and advanced pilot certifications without an SFOC and the associated fee. Five, flights over the current ceiling rules and flights near DND aerodromes should also not require an SFOC. They should need a NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization certificate. Six, remaining low complexity SFOC applications should have a fee of $50, not $150 per application. Seven, high complexity SFOC applications should have a higher fee of $6,000 per application, not $2,000. And finally, number eight, the RPAS operator certificate should have a fee of $5,000 every two years instead of the proposed $250 one-time fee. Get your feedback into Transport Canada as soon as you can. Feel free to copy me at dondronezon at gmail.com. Once again, the deadline is June 20th, 2021. As always, thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to your comments on this video. Safe and happy flying.